we are not allowed to declare whom we are working with. The reason why I speak to you is because the world should know that we are here. The Cleaners is a new documentary that reveals who's making the choices about what stays on social media platforms and what gets deleted. Delete. Ignore. Delete. Okay. It exposes the secretive world of digital cleaning. Third-party companies are hired by giants like Facebook to remove objectionable content. Social media platforms suggest that their platforms are open sites of democracy and free exchange, but they need and want to maintain complete control over what goes on. Mostly located in the Philippines, so-called content moderators can view up to 25,000 questionable images in a day. A lot of what they have to watch is deeply disturbing, raising serious questions about the toll it takes on them. I've seen hundreds of beddings. The Cleaners had its Canadian premiere at a hot docks in Toronto this week. We caught up with the filmmakers, Moritz Reiswijk and Hans Block on Wednesday. What, what led you to want to investigate the cleaners? There was um, a case in 2013 already uh, when a child abuse video was uploaded online on, on Facebook. Um, and it remained there for uh, so many hours that it was shared uh, 16,000 times bef before it was actually taken down. And that was the moment when both of us wondered, how is it actually handled? How is it moderated? Is it um, like all normally filtered or are there algorithms doing that kind of work? And we learned by an online research that it's actually not possible at all um, because algorithms can identify certain patterns in an image, but they can't really identify what the image is about. And so then the downside of having humans clean this content is that they have to see it. And you certainly get an impression in this documentary that these people are going to have PTSD at the very least, that they're, they're, they're being damaged themselves by what they're being exposed to. Do you have any impression that anyone is aware of that, that anyone's giving them any help? Yeah, that's the problem because uh, the new tech companies are incredibly secretive and uh, they try to hide the fact that the work is done uh, in the Philippines because most of the service is outsourced to the developing world. And uh, as you said, uh, there are thousands of young Filipinos sitting in front of a desk and uh, they review like child pornography, beheadings, terrorist uh, videos, uh, violence and, and all that cruel stuff. And sure, if you do that, uh, that have an effect on your mental health and there's no psychological support at these companies. Uh, no one cares about the workers and for example, the suicide rate is extremely high. If the companies aren't necessarily providing any help, did you feel a responsibility after getting them to talk about it. Sure, very much. Sometimes when we left Manila, it was really a hard feeling for us uh, because we thinking about what's going on there when we're not there. But uh, we worked in our research also with a psychologist based in Manila and Berlin, and we offer all of the content moderators help if they need to. And we are still in contact with them and we feel a big responsibility for all the protagonists in our movie. Why did they talk to you? What did they what was their motivation? <laughs> yeah, we were surprised that uh, most of them were actually quite proud about what they do because they told us mm, we do one of the most important jobs of the internet uh, and the world should know what we are doing uh, because um, without us the internet would be a mess uh, and your Facebook feed would be a mess. Um, but weren't they worried about losing their jobs if they were found out? Of course. Uh, so eventually we decided that uh, we only included workers who had just left the job uh, in, in the moment uh, of the shoot or sometimes within the time of the shoot. Um, and others who still uh, had to remain in the job, uh, we just uh, included in form of chat protocols. So we chatted with a lot of them and they gave us a lot of insights into their actual work and we decided to use this also as kind of a yeah, and then additional footage for the film. Have you gotten any pushback from the companies now that this, this film has been made? Mm. There was actually no response at all. And we, we tried several times to get in touch with them um, on several different layers uh, of these companies. Uh, but there was no response. We even sent them the, the finished cut and um, no, no reaction. It's interesting, just this week, Mark Zuckerberg was saying, we got 
caught flat-footed on the election interference. That won't happen again. And to that extent, he said, by the end of this year, we will have 20,000 people looking at the editorial um, and content. And right away, my mind meant, went to your documentary and what you're showing. What does 20,000 people mean in the context of what you've learned? So that's also interesting because we try to find out how many people actually working uh, in that kind of field. And uh, we are asking ourselves if the number of 20,000 people hired by Facebook is just the number of people we are, have really signed a contract for Facebook. Because uh, uh, the workers in the Philippines, there are thousands of young Filipinos, they have signed a contract with an outsourcing company which uh, uh, um, do the service for Facebook. And that's one of the questions we have, if these 20,000 people are really all workers or uh, that there are even more. And the second interesting thing is that it's not just about the, the, the quantity, it's also about the quality. Um, you have to um, really train well-educated people, a diverse uh, number of people doing their job and not just low-wage workers, 18, 19 year, year old Filipinos. Investigative work can take many forms. It can be print, it can be broadcast, um, but we're, we're constantly told that people's attention spans are getting shorter, that the stories need to be shorter, tighter, more focused. You've done an hour and a half long documentary that's an investigative piece. What is the role of documentary work in telling investigative stories? It's about digging deeper. I mean. It's, it's really a good example, uh, the case we had here. We couldn't just give a hidden camera to uh, one of the workers and, and ask him or her to bring it into the actual office and, and, and film the, the, what's, what's going on there. Um, and then we, we found this abandoned office in, in Manila. It's, it's an, an actual work space of this kind of work. And we invited the, the workers uh, who had just left the job to go there and we could actually, that's at least what we hope, we could transport the, the feeling of somebody sitting like in the 20th uh, floor high above the city of Manila and getting all the material of the world on screen and um, yeah, how elaborated in a way, but also how overwhelmed somebody must feel um, being in that position. And that was one of my questions because it seemed clear you couldn't have taken a camera in to show this actually taking place. So this was a form of recreation using people who had done the work? Yeah, sure, because uh, how do you make a film about an industry which is really, really closed, which is really, really uh, secretive, uh, so we, we don't have access to these offices? How do you make a film about people who are not allowed to speak with you? So we have to find solutions uh, to do, to transport the, the actual work and the meaning of the work uh, in a film. Based on what you've learned now, as you say, algorithms can't really be effective in interpreting video because there's such an emotional response to what you're seeing. But this suggests that humans doing it isn't the right solution either. Have you landed on what you think would be the best way? I think we are just at the starting point of understanding that this is the digital public. I mean, there are a lot of technology uh, progresses nowadays you know, to decentralize the, the platforms. To, to, it's also a question of, of control of who, who runs these platforms. Should, it, should we really accept that a few major companies in Silicon Valley divide the internet among them? Or should we get control back? It's a fascinating documentary, great piece of work. Thanks for talking about it. Very welcome. Thank you.